Hey everybody, and welcome to another Star Citizen video. My name is Scary Spikes, and in today's video, we'll be continuing my episodic comprehensive beginner's guide for new and returning players alike. If you're a brand new player and you're yet to create your account, you can do so very easily by following my link down in the description below. It'll take you to the RSI page, and it'll have my referral code pre-posted for you. That'll include 5,000 extra UEC for you on top of any game package that you buy. And if you'd like step-by-step -step instructions on how to do all of that, you can find last week's video in the top right-hand corner of the screen now, which will show you how to do that, as well as manage your RSI account, including buying a game package, exchanging and buying back pledges, and doing a character reset. All things that you really need to know as a new player. In this video, we're going to be building on that information. We're going to be covering things like creating and customizing your character, choosing a residence and why that's important, as well as basic and intermediate controls and navigation, followed by just leaving the atmosphere for the first time, which could be pretty daunting for new players. Before we get started, though, a huge thanks to Big Val Gaming for all of his support and being a VIP Gold channel member here on YouTube. If you'd like to do the same, you can support me in a huge way by clicking the blue join button down below and choosing the package that suits your needs, as little as two bucks a month, and it really goes a long way to help. You can also help the channel grow and expand for free by leaving a like and sharing the video with your friends, becoming a subscriber and ringing the bell. And of course, I do stream on Twitch as well, Wednesdays and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern. So come on over and join me there, as well as my Discord community. The links for those can be found down below also. Thank you so much for all your support, and let's go ahead and get into this video. Alrighty, everybody. So once you get into the main menu here, this is what you'll see. And if it's your first time or there has been some kind of wipe or patch, uh, new patch or major patch, you might see that there is a little thing down here that says that you need to unlock your friends list by choosing a residence. Don't worry, we'll do that in just a moment. Before we get started here, though, if you want to jump to any part of the video, I've made some chaptering in the description below as well as in the seek bar for your convenience. You can jump around to whatever you like. Right, so we're going to have a look at the main menu here first. We're going to take a little tour and show you where everything is. And then we're going to go ahead and jump in and start character crea uh, creation and customization as well as choosing our residence. And we'll go ahead and talk about the relevance of that as well at that time. Right, so the Persistent Universe, this is where the majority of folks play. Uh, this is where you can have servers from the Americas, Europe, and Australia, and they will have a maximum of 50 people each. So once a server fills up to 50 people, then you're going to basically have another server pop up, which is going to accommodate the extra traffic. We'll come back to this in a little bit. Star Marine is basically the FPS element in its own little module. Honestly, I really don't recommend it. The last time I tried it, it was extremely buggy. Uh, it, it was just really, really slow. I don't know if the net code is even written properly for this thing. It's just pretty meh. Um, just keep in mind that you're playing sort of a lesser uh, developed version of what's available in the uh, Persistent Universe, which in itself is already alpha. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. Uh, the reason why I don't like Star Marine is, I mean, it, I don't like FPS to begin with. So that is definitely a very subjective thing on my part. But it's also objectively just very slow. Uh, it has a lot of issues and bugs, and uh, it's just not a lot of fun. So if you want to play FPS, honestly, my recommendation would be just to go play a dedicated FPS title and not this particular module here, with the exception if you want to do some FPS in the open universe, the persistent universe, that is way more fun and it's a lot more dynamic. So I would definitely recommend that. And moving on, we also have Arena Commander. This is basically one of the first modules that we ever had. Uh, I started backing the game in 2014, and Arena Commander was literally the only thing that we had outside of a hangar and a handful of ships. So uh, Arena Commander has expanded now to basically being sort of like a practice and training platform. You can play it solo against AI, or you can bring your friends in to join you. Maximum of four people in a group fighting AI. There's a number of different things you can do there. There's free fly. There's always uh, enemies that you can kill and uh, things that you can do there like uh, Pirate Swarm, for example, uh, which will unlock the ability to purchase the Pirate Gladius and the Pirate Caterpillar. It's pretty cool. I'm sure they'll expand on this at some point in the future. But yeah, that's pretty much just a dog fighting simulator in its own little module. All right, now we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the rest of the uh, symbology or the... Uh, the buttons on the screen here so we have quick game that's pretty straightforward we're gonna jump into the options menu very quickly before we do that though once you have set up your character and chosen a residence you'll also notice that there will be two boxes here there will be one on the top right hand corner of the screen which is going to show you uh, your friends list and then there's going to be another one on the bottom right hand corner of the screen right about here uh, which is going to show you notifications so if you're getting friend requests or party invites it will all be there 
All right, let's go ahead and jump into the options menu real quick. I'll show you that and then we'll jump into the game. Now, for those of you coming from Elite Dangerous, you're probably not going to be too nervous seeing this menu because it can be pretty complex. And I know as someone who's played Elite Dangerous in the past that that menu is absolutely nuts, especially in the control section. So don't be afraid, even if you haven't played Elite Dangerous. Uh, honestly, there's not too much to be afraid here. Just take things one step at a time and you'll be absolutely fine. So we have a few tabs on the top of the screen here. The first one is game settings. These are just generic on, off and slider settings for the game, depending on how you want it to be presented to you or what options you would like to change in terms of preferences. There's a few here that we'll go over. And if you're interested, I might make a video about the best options to change right away when you get into the game to kind of make things a bit easier for new players. So if that's something that interests you, definitely let me know in the comments below. And if there's enough interest, I'll make a video on it. Now, of course, we have graphic settings. This one is probably a little bit more simpler than all the others, but you've got a few sliders here. You've got gamma, brightness and contrast. You've got your resolution as well as some detail settings. Honestly, a lot of these uh, don't have as much of an impact as others, and they're not really documented well enough to show you that. I do have a performance guide if you'd like to increase your performance a little bit uh, in Star Citizen. So I'll link that video in the top right hand corner of the screen for you. Make sure to go check it out. It's a little bit older now, but it still has a lot of good tips uh, for you to make your performance a little bit better. And especially a few more tips there for people who have an NVIDIA based GPU. Looking at the audio menu here, again, uh, you've got some yes and no's, you've got some sliders and uh, a few drop downs. Nothing special here. It's pretty straightforward. Go ahead and look at that at your own uh, time, uh, but it's relatively straightforward. I should say if you have any questions or anything like that, if you have any issues or run into any snags or want to know what stuff does, come on over to our Discord. We have a wonderful community there of some amazing people that would be happy to help you. And of course, uh, if I'm not busy making a video or if it's not stream day or something like that, um, and if I have the time, I'll be more than happy to, to sit down with you and help you through myself. Uh, so come on over to our Discord and don't be shy. And we'll move over to controls. That's going to be the next one. Now, this is where you basically go through the preferences for your controls or the things that uh, the input devices that you use for the game. There's a number of different options here and honestly way too many to go through in this video. As you'll see, if we start to open these up, they really, really start to open up quite a bit. There's menus and sub menus and all sorts of stuff. But this is all the very kind of elite dangerous ask settings that you might expect if you are coming from that game. Again, don't let it overwhelm you. Take it one uh, menu at a time, one sub menu at a time, and just go ahead and read through it. A lot of these actually just make sense. They'll let you know what they do, and uh, it's relatively straightforward. And again, it, you know, don't don't be afraid to ask any questions in the comments or in Discord if you have any trouble. One thing to note here is there is a, a little box on the bottom right hand corner of the screen here, and this will change the controls for the device that you are using. So you'll notice here that I have a few different uh, hotasses set up, and uh, I actually only just have one. I have the uh, Verpal v uh, CM3 throttle as well as the Warbird base and the Constellation R stick. And uh, the reason why you have these, at least the reason why I have them, is that I have a five-way switch on my throttle. And you can configure that switch to basically change the entire profile over so that all of your buttons then can be programmed to do something else or you can have it as a five-way switch as a button or like a temporary button. So that's why the game sees it as this many different items. But again, you might need to uh, contact the support for your HOTAS or HOSAS maker or developer for more information uh, or go check out the knowledge bases that they have available as uh, there's a lot of different kinds of hardware that you can use with this game and uh, you can configure it in many different ways. But again, this is where you do that. Take your time, go over it uh, at your own pace. And again, if you have any questions, let us know. We'll do my, well, well, I'll do my best to help you out. All right, now we're gonna go to keybinds and this is uh, specifically more for mouse and keyboard. You'll see that uh, we have this gigantic keyboard layout here with like literally three or four different items per most of the keys. And it can seem extremely daunting. It's really not. And if you watch this video all the way through, you'll know that uh, there are only really just a handful of things that you need to know and need to memorize. And not even then, I mean, your body, your, your muscle memory will just take over for you after a while. You'll never even need to think about it. So don't worry about this. 90% of the stuff you don't even need to worry about. You can always come back and reference it if you need it. But yeah, no, no worries there. And again, you do have some options here, uh, selecting different devices. Of course, you'll need to go back to the controls menu where we were at and check out the advanced controls. Um, if you want to set up your HOTAS or your HOSAS, you can also use a gamepad and you can use your mouse and keyboard. Uh, the advanced controls are here, by the way. So this is where 
you want to go through and set everything up and in the advanced controls you also have this button down here and this is where you can start setting up your hodes and uh, what you can do as well is there's a little um, little uh, drop up menu, I guess you could say here, that has some sort of pre-installed generic configurations for the most popular HOTAS systems. If yours is here, you can use that. There is a way to import and export these as well. I won't be showing that in this particular video because it's a very beginner friendly video. Um, but you can actually um, export these. They'll export out to your user folder and uh, you can then back them up so that if anything happens, you can always just uh, import them back and you'll have all your key bindings. Because if you guys have played Elite before or, you know, if you're just returning to Star Citizen and you're playing Star Citizen again uh, or pretty much any other space sim, honestly, you guys will know just how many different key binds you can have. And there's, th these are just all the categories. If you expand these, you're going to see that there's way more stuff in here. And again, a lot of the stuff is fairly straightforward. Some of it is a little uh, nonsensical, but the majority of the stuff is pretty straightforward. So go through this again at your own time. Just understand and accept the fact that this is going to probably take you about an hour or possibly even more, depending on your setup. It's totally worth it to get it done, but just don't forget to back up your settings before you go any further. That way you always have something that you can rely on and fall back on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the last tab here. This is going to be the comms tab, and this is going to have information about your microphone and VOIP, as well as uh, setting up your camera, face tracking, and a bunch of other things that are related to those things. So again, a lot of sliders here, a lot of yes and no's, and a few drop downs. Again, it's relatively straightforward, this particular page, as compared to, for example, the Keybinds page. Uh, but again, go through this at your own time. But this is where you can find things like, you know, adjusting your microphone, your push to talk or, um, you know, communicating with other players and stuff like that. Um, there is also an option for face tracking with your camera. Um, you can set up track IR, I believe, or your, your Toby eye tracker if you have that uh, on this page as well. So there's definitely a lot of things uh, to go through there. I don't have a tracking solution myself, and I personally prefer not to use the webcam tracking because I feel that it's really not accurate. Uh, and generally speaking, I only communicate through Discord. I rarely, rarely ever communicate through the game. Uh, and so that's why I usually mute my microphone here. All right, so that is basically the main menu. That gives you an idea of where everything is. The next step is we're going to be jumping into the actual gameplay uh, right after we create our character and right after we choose our residence. And that is really important as well. So stick with me as we work our way through it. And I promise it'll be pretty painless. All right, let's move on to the next step. All right, everybody. So let's go ahead and jump into character customization. This is something you'll have to do regardless if it's your first time in here or if you've done a character reset or a wipe. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click on Persistent Universe here, and this should take you directly into the character customizer there. Never mind the little error that I have at the bottom. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and choose male or female here. I'll go ahead and choose female just because one of my favorite uh, suits in the game actually works perfectly on the female model, but it doesn't work well on the male model. I'm not really sure why that is, but that's okay. So you'll have an option here. Uh, so you can through uh, you can cycle through available sources. Uh, it's weird that it calls it sources. I guess you could say it's just different archetypes uh, of uh, different ethnicities that are available as a starting point. Uh, and then, of course, you can click on begin blending if you want to go into quite a bit more detail. You'll notice that we have two models here. We have a model on the left and a model on the right. The model on the right is going to be respective or uh, representative rather of what we actually have as an end product. And the model on the left is just showing you all the different facial features as you can see when we move the mouse around we've got the head the scalp there we've got the brows the eyes the nose um the cheeks the ears the chin the lips and so on and so what you can do is you can integrate a lot of that into your character based on all the different models that are available so you can cycle through a bunch of different ones now of course this is the model that we are most based on so you're not going to have any slider there but you can incorporate the different characteristics of all of the different models available to you uh, through this option here. So let's say if we wanted to maybe incorporate some of the characteristics of this model into this model, then we would just slide it. And as you can see, as we slide it more and more, the model on the right starts to look a little bit more like the model on the left. And if we slide back, then we're using less of the characteristics of this model in our end character model. So. That's, uh, that's going to be for you to kind of play around with and see what you like. Now, of course, you can uh, do a bunch of different things here. You can change all sorts of things. You can change uh, the eyes and, of course, also the eye color. 
using this one right here. So there you go. Let's see. We'll pick a nice light blue. That should work. Um, not too crazy about this, honestly, because every time there is a reset, or if you ever do have to do a character reset, then you're basically having to do this all over again anyway. Um, but I usually generally pick something that I think kind of looks good, and then I'll go from there. So you can cycle through each of these and set it to whatever you like. Uh, and then finally, when you're done, you can go ahead and review it, and this is what your character will look like. So you can simply go ahead and press accept, or you can play with any of these features to the point where you're satisfied with your character. I'll just go ahead and click accept in the interest of time, and then we'll click on save. Okay, so when, you done, uh, when you've done that, it'll take you to this, it'll say persistent universe, primary residence selection. The residence is essentially a place where all of your things are put uh, at the sort of onset or the, the start of the game. Now, if there is ever a character reset or a patch related reset, anything that you have purchased on the website or even in the game with the exception of any kind of consumables like ammunition or med pens or crypto keys will appear automatically all consolidated in your residence. Some people have used character resets for this particular reason when they may have bought some ship components or weapons or suits in different areas around Stanton and then literally just did a character reset moments later just to bring everything in together. I do want to warn you that is not the appropriate use of a character reset tool and you are risking losing your money, your progress, uh, your items and you know any reputation that you may have gained. So you got to be really careful with character resets. They are a last ditch resort uh, and you're, you're being very sort of uh, very uh, uncautious, I guess you could say, uh, by using it as a means of kind of bringing everything together into your uh, into your residence. But of course, you can do that if you wish. And especially if you're starting out, you probably don't have too much things to lose anyway. So there might be a good opportunity uh, to do it then rather than later when you've made more progress. Anyway, I digress. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into this drop down menu here. You're going to go ahead and choose Stanton system. And then on the right hand side here, you're going to have a few options. And honestly, technically, it doesn't matter where you start because you can get to any part of the system at any point later on. Of course, if you have a much smaller ship, it will take you much longer to get to different places because you won't have enough quantum fuel to get all the way across the system in a much, much smaller ship with a low quality quantum drive. But more on that a little bit later. I am going to go over, however, very quickly about my recommendations of which ones are the best to choose and which ones are the worst. In my opinion, the best one is Lorville. The reason for that is because it has a number of different shops available to you right away. You can go ahead and get yourself a new suit. You can go ahead and uh, start looking around for ships. You can even rent ships, which is great. Rental ships are available at the other landing zones as well. But the reason why Lorville is good is because it's very centrally located. It's on the first ring around the sun in the system. And that means that whether you want to go to Crusader, Area 18, um, on uh, Art Corp or maybe New Babbage on Microtech, you're going to have roughly uh, approximately the same amount of travel time from Hurston to any of those locations. If you started, for example, in Orison, uh, then, you know, getting to different parts of Stanton might be a little bit more difficult, especially since Orison has a very big atmosphere that takes forever to get out of. And it's also just really difficult to navigate around this area for new people because you have to take trams uh, little shuttles from from platform to platform to get to where you want to go um ad admittedly orison is honestly one of the most beautiful uh, scenes and one of the most beautiful places in stanton it's it's also the newest landing zone uh and subsequently it's also the worst on performance um but it, it is a very beautiful place it does have a lot of stuff it's got a mall it's got a hospital a bunch of really cool stuff there but again I wouldn't recommend you spawning here, not just because of the performance issues and because of how far away it is uh, or further away from, from everything else than Lorville is, but also because it's just not a very new player friendly place to be. Uh, Area 18 is not too bad. I would say I would give Area 18 uh, the second place. Lorville would of course be the first. Area 18 is uh, really well laid out and it doesn't take quite as long to uh, navigate around the city. And there's quite a number of different shops available, including Center Mass, which you can get uh, med pens and FPS weapons and ship weapons. And you can also go and check out Astro Armada, which is one of the two ship shops currently available in Stanton. Uh, finally, I want to talk about New Babbage. New Babbage is the second newest landing zone. And the benefit of New Babbage is that it actually has a secret landing zone 
outside of the new Babbage Interstellar spaceport, which allows you to go straight in to do trading and, and sell trading commodities and stuff like that, and also get ground vehicles, which is really cool. It also has a bar and a bunch of different shops. It also has center mass. It also has an Omega Pro, which you can use uh, that to buy ship components. The downside, of course, is that new Babbage is the furthest away from anything else in the system in, uh, in in the current state of the game. So if you have a smaller ship, you might find that you are struggling a little bit to get to places like Area 18 or Lorville or maybe even Orison just because it's so far away from everything. So with all that being said, uh, I would definitely recommend you go with Lorville. It's a nice centrally available place. There is a business center there where you can sell commodities, although you have to take a train. Um, there's some shops there that you can uh, that you can go to. And honestly, it's literally right in the middle of the system. And that's where I would recommend you to start because it would just be so much easier for you to start in the middle because then you would basically have uh, or at least significantly reduce your travel time to other locations if you want to go and do some exploring later on. The other thing I want to mention here is that we also have a drop down menu, or I guess drop up menu, where it gives you a choice of servers. Now, as I mentioned before, I at least I believe I mentioned before, you don't have the option to choose exactly what server you want to play on. Servers are dynamic. So as soon as there's 50 people on a server, a new server opens up and you can go and play on that one. Of course, that's all handled in the background automatically. Um, but you do have a choice of which region you'd like to play in. Best will, of course, pick the region with the lowest latency and best performance for you. Um, but you can also choose to play on a specific region if you'd like to do that. And there are some benefits to this as well. If you happen to uh, encounter issues where you're generally playing on best and you might be in the United States of America uh, or Canada, where I am, uh, then, you know, generally speaking, the USA server is probably what's going to be picked if you choose best but you might run into issues where you might not be able to log in or you have an infinite loading screen and in this case it might actually help to pick eu or aus uh, australia uh, to try to log into a different set of servers which might be able to reset you and allow you to re-log in or re-log into the usa servers. so something to keep in mind we'll go ahead and select the usa for now actually i'm just going to go and set best because i know usa will be the best one uh, for me automatically here and then simply hit on set as permanent residence or primary residence. I apologize. Uh, then we'll go ahead and click on confirm. And as soon as we'll do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and get loaded into the game here. So we'll see you guys in just a few moments and we'll go over some basic and intermediate controls, navigation and getting to your ship to take off for the very first time. When you first load into the game, you're going to be laying down in a bed like this in a dormitory very similar to this one. And it'll be exactly the same one if you chose Lorville because that's where we're at currently. There's a few different ways to get out of bed. You can use the inner thumb menu by holding F and pressing left mouse button on either side where you see the words get up. Of course, this menu is very useful in other parts of the game and makes up for about 85 to 90% of all interactions that you'll have in the game because you just use it that often. So you'll have to get used to using it often and everywhere uh, because it's pretty much the majority of the game. I digress though. Let's go ahead and get up a different way. You can hold Y, which is the default key for getting up and out of anything that you might be sitting on or laying in. So, for example, if you're on a bed or if you're in a seat uh, inside of your ship, uh, any of those things will allow you to get up. So, for example, we can use the inner thought menu to have a seat here on this chair and we can use the inner thought menu generally to get up. As you can see there, if we look, look off to the side after holding F uh, or we can simply just hold Y. Now, the inner thought menu, as I said, is pretty much all over the game and you can use it to interact with anything in your environment. But what you'll notice is that the colors do change depending on how far away you are from things. If we're too far away, we'll kind of get this green tinge. And if we click on it, we're probably going to click on something else in the environment that we don't intend to click on. As you can see there, it'll say open, which is not what we're really looking at or focusing on. But if we move a little closer, you'll notice that this no longer highlights. And now we're highlighting the thing that we actually want to open with a left click. We can go ahead and open that. And of course, you know, we can do that as well. So. You just have to make sure that you get nice and close to get the blue tinge over the item that you want to interact with. Otherwise, if it's unavailable or too far away, it'll be green just like that. Now you're walking around with your standard FPS controls. That's going to be W, A, S, and D. You can go ahead and crouch with your control and you can go ahead and lay down in a prone position using X. 
You can then use spacebar to get up to a crouched position and spacebar again to get up to a standing position. We'll go ahead and use the F uh, interaction menu here, the uh, inner thought menu with the left mouse button to go ahead and open this door and we'll walk out to the Habs. Okay, so you might notice that you're walking a little bit slow. You can fix that by scrolling your mouse wheel all the way up. That'll make you move faster. You scroll your mouse wheel down. That'll make you move slower. And if you want to run fast without using your mouse wheel, you can simply hold shift and that will make you run faster. Now, there are other controls that we will be able to talk about later on once we're out of an armistice zone and with a weapon in our hands. But before we do that, we need to get a weapon and we probably need to get some armor. So let's head over to Tammany and Sons, which is one of the stores here in Lorville. Go ahead and hold F again to access the inner thought menu and left click on the panel to call the elevator. We'll come over here and we'll notice that we have a panel that we can scroll through. But you notice that when you scroll, you zoom in and out. To avoid this, simply left, uh, or rather hold F and then middle mouse click inside of the panel where your cursor is, and then you'll be able to scroll up and down without any problem. Go ahead and click on the floor that you want. In this case, it's going to be the ground floor, and then we're going to run over to Tammany and Sons and pick up a few things. All right, so when you're out of the elevator at the L19 Habs here in Lorville, you'll be in the lobby here. And when we walk past this little terminal here, you'll see these terminals in other places. We'll talk about them a little bit later, but essentially they're used to pay off any bounties that you may have. We're going to go ahead and head over to one of the stores here in Lorville called Tammany and Sons. We're going to pick up a brand new undersuit and helmet and perhaps even a weapon. And uh, you should have enough money to do that if you use the code in the description down below to sign up for a new account as you'll get 5,000 Alpha UEC for free in addition to anything that you might get with a game package if you decided to purchase one. So just go ahead and follow the route that I'm taking here and it'll take you to Tammany and Sons. And just know that it's obviously it's uh, something that's going to take you quite a little bit of time to get to know where everything is. But I promise you it'll be sooner than later. It's really, really not that bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a peek inside. I'll give you a little tour and show you how to purchase things as well as how to equip things using the brand new uh, physicalized inventory system uh, that's only been around for a couple of patches here. If we look towards the right hand side here, we can see that we have a number of suits that are available. And of course, we can try these on if we'd like. Again, with the interaction menu, hold F and then left the mouse click to try that on. That looks really, really sexy. I like it. Giggity. All right, let's go ahead and then press E to get out of that. And uh, we'll look around the rest of the shop here. Now, you'll see that we have a few different things available. We got some uh, boots here and we've got some vests as well as some sweaters and pants. In fact, let me go ahead and try these on real quick and see what these feel like. All right, we'll go ahead and try those on. All right, giggity, giggity, goo. All right, I like those. Uh, let's not let's not go ahead and waste too much time here, ladies and gentlemen. We've, this is an instructional video. We got to take things seriously. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and move on. So uh, we'll see that we have a couple of uh, different panels here. Now these are actually exactly the same. Uh, not sure why I'm saying they're different. They're uh, they're just a different way to purchase than from the, uh, the the store directly from the displays. So you can simply go ahead and hold F again with the interaction menu here, left mouse click, and we'll have the menu here to purchase a number of different things. Very easy to purchase stuff. You can simply go ahead and shop by category, first of all. Uh, and uh, you can uh, look around for something that you like. Uh, a lot of these categories have numerous different products in them as well. So you can kind of go through. A lot of the same designs have different colors most of the time. So you can browse through and see what you like. Now, uh, we're going to have a look at the armor really quickly. I did already pick up a piece of armor because I wanted to make this a little bit shorter. Um, but you can certainly... Um, pick some things up here if you were shopping for let's say this ADP core you would click on that you'll get a small preview here but a much larger preview here unfortunately you can't really move it around as far as I know uh, it'll give you a little bit more information about its size and its grade right over here the manufacturer right over there a brief description as well as a buy and a return button return is just to go back to the previous menu you've got the price down here as well as a little write-up about uh, all of the different characteristics of the armor, what type of armor it is, what kind of damage protection it offers, and what kind of protection against the elements it offers as well. There are some armors, for example, specifically the Pembroke and the Novikov armor that offer heat and cold resistance, respectively. You might want to look out for those. We do have the Pembroke one actually here that I can show you, which has a very high heat tolerance, but a not a very high uh, cold tolerance. So designed for hot planets. And all of the different planets around Star Citizen's uh, only system at the moment, Stanton, do have their own sort of micro 
um, uh, micro environments, I guess you can say, where they, they're all very different. Some of them are pretty windy. Some of them are stormy. Uh, some of them are very cold. Others very, very hot. Uh, so, for example, this right here is the heat armor. You can see quite a lot more bulky than some of the other armors. Doesn't offer as much in the way of protection versus projectiles and beam weapons and things like that. But very utilitarian based, has a huge backpack for carrying things and protects you very well against the heat. So if we have a little bit of a look here, we can see the Novikov armor. It'll give you some information here. We can see that, uh, you know, the, the other armor was around, uh, what was it, 80, 90 degrees or so. And here we have protection up to 225 degrees. So that's very important because uh, it gives you protection in the hottest of the hottest environments, which is required sometimes when you're spending a lot of time outdoors and you don't want to dehydrate and eventually die as a result of not having the right protection. So uh, the way that you buy things, very, very simple. We're going to go ahead and just buy a few med pens here. Med pens are just these little uh, auto injectors that are consumables. You can use them whenever you need a heal and they'll provide some basic healing for you. Now, there is a new medical system, uh, which I will make a full video about in the future, uh, which uh, has all sorts of different types of injuries and ways to treat those injuries. Med pens will not save you from death specifically. They won't bring you back once you're on the brink of death, but they will prevent you from dying if you use them to heal yourself before you bleed out, for example. In any case, I digress. Let's go ahead and simply click on the product that you'd like to buy. Again, we'll get some more information about the product. A little bit of a write-up and the company that makes it. We have the price down here, so it looks like uh, pretty cheap, under 100 UEC each. And then we're going to go ahead and click on buy. I wish this was a slider. Unfortunately, it's not. So you are either going to go max, min, or you're going to click that plus button however many times you'd like to buy that product. So we're going to go ahead and pick up five. I've already got five, but just want to demonstrate this to you. And uh, it'll show you that your current balance is this amount here. The next amount is going to be the cost of the products. And this is going to be your net balance or what you're going to be left with after you purchase the product. Simply go ahead and press this button down here to confirm your purchase. And you'll get a little green message like that. And your purchase is now complete. Now, it's very easy, just as easy as that, if not a little bit easier to purchase things. Uh, we'll go ahead and purchase a second undersuit. I do believe this is actually the stone skin undersuit here. Very nice. Actually, one of my favorite undersuits. Really, really nice looking matte black, everything. Hold F and we're going to go ahead and click on buy. And then very much the same thing as you saw before. Uh, you're going to get a, a little bit of information about your finances here. The cost or the, the, the total balance currently. Uh, the amount that this is going to cost and how much you'll have afterwards. And then, of course, again, some more information about the item. If you'd like to purchase it, simply click this green button here. And there you go. Purchase complete. So now that we've got a few things, we've got a piece of armor, we've got an undersuit, and we've got a weapon that I purchased from this terminal just a little bit earlier on. We're going to go ahead and use the inventory system to equip everything. Now, it's important to note that uh, the inventory system can be accessed with the I key. Uh, and of course, there is also a different type of inventory for depending on where you are. So if you're on your ship, you'll have a ship inventory. If you are in a landing zone, you'll have a landing zone or local inventory. And then, of course, you do also have vehicle inventory and inventory within your own suit as well. So when we put on our armor and our backpacks and stuff like that here, you'll notice that we have exactly the same thing. We'll have extra inventory. Kind of like pocket space, pretty much. That's what it is. So on the right-hand side here, we're going to see that we are currently in our local inventory. What's important to note is that whatever place you decide to start in, whether it's Lorville or Area 18 or New Babbage or Orison, you'll know that uh, there is always an orbital station above them. Uh, we'll go into this in a little bit more detail, perhaps in another video in the series, but there is always a space station floating directly above any of the major landing zones. So, for example, for uh, Lorville, it's going to be Everest Harbor. For Area 18, it's going to be Bajini Point. For uh, New Babbage, it's going to be Port Tresler. And for Orison, it's going to be, at least for now, Port Olisar. And what's really important to note about these locations is that they share their entire local inventory with their respective major landing zones. What that means for you is if you have anything in your local inventory here on Lorville and you go up to Everest Harbor, uh, which is, again, the station that's floating above Lorville, then you will have access to all of these items from Everest Harbor as well. They're not interconnected and there's no way to transfer items short of putting them into your ship and moving them physically yourself. Hopefully in the future, we're going to have an option where we can pay an NPC or another player to transport all of our items. Uh, but you can also use the Moby Glass and the Knickknacks app, which I'll show you in just a moment to see where everything is. 
Okay, enough of that rambling. Let's go ahead and put on some stuff. So there's a few ways that you can do it. Of course, we can take off this helmet here and simply drag it out. And then we can simply drag this helmet on. And there you go. Very simple. Now, what you can also do is uh, even if you're wearing something else already, so we want to equip this helmet, but we're already wearing one, you can simply just double click. Very easy. What I'd like to do too is I want to change my undersuit. And as you can see, we have a few filters available here, but you might not be able to see them when you first open your inventory system. So all you need to do is just go ahead and click on the filters button there. And that'll bring up all your filters. And these are pretty self-explanatory. All of your undersuits, like the two stone skin undersuits that I just purchased, will be here. Your armor will be here. Your weapons will be there and so on. So we have a number of different places where we can store items and everything is nicely segregated. Of course, again, wishful thinking here, but would be nice to have a search function, which we currently don't. We can sort things and stuff like that. Uh, and if I haven't mentioned already, there is a little bit of information up here, specifically on the top right hand corner of the screen of each of these types of uh, little mini screens that pop up in the inventory system as we have right here, uh, which will show you the number of uh, or the, the amount of space that's available in that inventory. So currently it's a local inventory. It's a pretty big one. And we've got lots of space available there. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and double click. That's going to get us into our brand new undersuit. And yeah, I really like the way that one looks. Pretty cool. A little bit of a red accent there. Looking really nice. And then we're going to go ahead and equip some of our armor. So we're going to start with our helmet. And the rest of the stuff here. We'll just go ahead and double click. And you'll notice that as I did that, we have some things popping up over here. So those are the different... Uh, uh, inventories that pop up they're sort of like micro inventories that uh, are essentially the pockets in our armor and in our pants uh, and you'll be able to put things in there now mind you the storage capacity is shown here we have a much smaller storage capacity here as you can see as compared to in the local inventory because of course they're just pockets this isn't like you know 3.14 anymore or 3.13 rather or whenever uh whatever was the patch before uh the inventory system was implemented but in any case you can put little things in here like ammunition and things like that now equipping weapons is very very similar uh you can simply go ahead and drag and drop or you can double click if you want to drag and drop you can hold the left mouse button and you'll notice that we have some little circular sort of uh icons that appear and uh, if we drag the weapon over there we can get a bit of a silhouette of the weapon that shows us where we can actually put it now we don't really have a choice really uh in terms of uh, where it goes if we just double click on it so if we put the weapon back refresh the page there we go double click on it it's just gonna go, go to kind of like the first inventory slot we can simply take this out put it back in the inventory and then move it if we want to and then of course we can just double click as well so there you go so that's how to equip weapons and then of course you can also equip ammunition and other things as well we've got some ammo here so we're going to go ahead and equip ammo and again ammo is exactly the same way to equip you're going to go ahead and click and hold with the left mouse button and you'll notice that we have some little circles appearing here and if we drag the ammo over any of these circles it'll show you physicalized where on your armor that actual piece of um uh, that cartridge or that uh that magazine will go so we can see that we already have one there so we're going to go ahead and put one there and we'll put another one there and then of course you can also just double click it then simply to remove the ammo you can simply just drag it off your person and put it back into whatever inventory you'd like. You can even put it into your armor or your pants, wherever you'd like to put it. Uh, one thing that's important to note as well here is that these circles are representative of how much, uh, how many bullets are left in your magazine. Uh, so if you have magazines that you have reloaded from, but they had partial ammo still left inside, then that will be represented to you visually here when you're managing your, uh, your ammo in your inventory system. So just something to keep in mind. So we'll get ahead, go ahead and do that. And then we're pretty much good to go. We've got everything that we need. I don't think I'm going to wear the backpack. I could if I wanted to. If I did that, it, it as you can see here, then we've got the backpack as well as some extra storage space. But uh, I, don't, I don't think that looks particularly great on this piece of armor. We're just going to go ahead and press I. And now if we press F4 a couple of times and hold the Z key, you can look around and we can see that we are fairly well equipped. Although I don't know where the weapon went let me just double check where the weapon went here 
Yeah, for some reason, the weapon didn't equip there. So sometimes you might have to equip it several times. But again, ladies and gentlemen, Alpha is uh, the stage that we're in development at the current moment. So these things are going to happen. So there's a little overview about how to purchase all of the different kinds of equipment that you might need, where you need to go, and how to manage it using your inventory. Now, just keep in mind that this is exactly the same way if you are on your ship, which I can demonstrate later on. You simply just move things from one inventory to another. It's pretty simple. All right, so the very last thing I'm going to show you here before we go and grab our spaceship and get out of here is the Moby Glass. Now, you're going to be using this quite often, and I'll try to kind of go over this as quickly as I can. I will try to make maybe a more detailed uh, sort of deep dive Moby Glass video, but I want you to be able to uh, just get some good use out of it and, uh, and be able to know where to go to do the things that you need to do as a new player. And then, of course, like I said, we'll do a deep dive another time. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to see. So we're going to press F1. That's going to bring you into here. And uh, fairly straightforward, honestly. Uh, you've got your personal details up here. So I've got my name here. You've got your UEC balance. And you've got your crime stat. The crime stat is something you get if you commit crimes. And eventually, it will allow people uh, like players and NPCs to start coming after you in uh, with more increasing difficulty as that number goes up. It goes from 1 to 5. And uh, if you do get caught, you can be arrested uh, and or destroyed um and then uh, or rather or arrested or destroyed and in either of those cases if you did have that crime stat then you would be going to prison for a certain amount of time so if you want a little bit more detail about how the prison system works how the the crime and punishment system works here in star citizen go ahead and check out my crime and punishment video i did that uh, a couple of weeks ago i'm sure you'll enjoy that uh but then uh, we also have some basic information here the only thing that you really need to uh, be aware of is the O2 tank. Whenever you're out in a place that doesn't have atmosphere, you're going to need O2, otherwise known as oxygen, of course. And your uh, your your system, your, your uh, suit does have a certain amount of oxygen in it, and it's represented by this number here. So if you run out of that, the only option is run as fast as you can before ideally you run out of this uh, into a, an atmosphere uh, or a pressurized environment or you can also use an oxy pen which is kind of like the med pen that you saw earlier but it's blue and you can buy it from the same place that you can buy uh, any med pen so uh, you can use that to uh, give yourself some extra oxygen in the interim other than that there's a few buttons down here we're going to go over these very quickly the very first one here uh, is going to be your social. So you're going to see your chat channel uh, right here in the middle. There's a few tabs up here. We've got a pending tab. So we've got uh, some friends uh, that are uh, asking us uh, or some people that are asking to become friends with us. So you get that here. You'll get party inv uh, invites here as well. Uh, then you have your friends list down here. You can also talk to ATC. Uh, we'll check this out in just a moment when we get the ship out. Uh, but you can talk to ATC either uh, on your way out or on your way into any station or landing zone through the friends tab here. It'll always be at the very top, which is really nice. Moving on, we have the channels tab. You can go ahead and click the plus and type in whatever you want and then click the checkbox here if you want to uh, create a, uh, a new channel. As I have here, we have the SSB Gaming channel, so we can invite people here. This is just the text channel, as is the global chat channel. And you can access this screen very quickly anytime simply by pressing F11. That'll take you right into this screen right here. If you want to uh, show the global chat on your, uh, on your screen here, you can simply press F12. Go back into F11 here to show you the rest of this stuff. On the right-hand side here, you'll see uh, as long as you are in the global channel, because if we go over to the SSP Gaming channel, we can see that there's no players here, and you'll have a party uh, channel created automatically whenever you invite someone to party, which you can do by going into the general channel, and you can right-click on anybody's name and interact with them that way. Additionally, you can go into your friends tab and right-click on their names and interact with them in exactly the same way. What you can do as well is you can go into the manage section here, which you can use to change colors of the text in different channels, as well as a few other things. And uh, you can also show and hide it from your visor. Then up here, uh, you've got some information about the amount of people that are in the server. This isn't always accurate, but it gives you a good indication of how busy the server is. In this case, it is not busy at all. It's showing I'm the only person here. I don't imagine that is true. If we head over to where we see members, we see that there's um, a good handful of people in here, definitely more than one, but that's where you get that information from. 
The next one is going to be the vehicle loadout manager. Now, I, mean, uh, I mentioned in uh, a little bit earlier in the video that in uh, your residence or whatever residence you pick, that is initially where all of your ships and everything is going to be. So you need to be in the same place where the ship is that you want to edit in order to be able to edit it. So when you click on the ship there, you'll get a little uh, hologram here, a little bit of uh, information about the ship down here. And then, of course, you have all the different modules and the different tabs up here. So in the systems uh, tab here, we'll see that we have coolers, power plants, quantum drives and shield generators. And you can click on each one of these. And if you had other items purchased, you could simply uh, click on them and you can equip them uh, whenever you hover over these then you will get some additional information down here including the size and the grade i did make a video about this called understanding ship components it's a little old but it conveys some really good information i'd recommend uh, watching it as it gives you a little bit more detail about what all this stuff means going over to the paint section here if you have any paints purchased for the particular ship then they will appear here simply click on them to equip them over here, uh, very much the same way as anything else, you would equip all of your different weapons and missiles. You can, of course, unequip and re-equip simply by clicking the unequip button and then clicking the item that you'd like to equip and it will equip automatically. In order to save that, though, you do need to click on this little button down here and you see the button flash. That means that it's saved. If you don't do that, then your changes will not be saved. So it's very important that you do that. Now, uh, we can go down here. We can see that we have a few different weapons. So, for example, if I wanted to have this weapon here instead of a gimbal, uh, we can simply just click on this and we can click which ship we want to take it off of. Uh, there is going to be a little bit more information in a video to come about all of the different components in here and weapons and what they all mean. So, for now, we're just going to go ahead and skip over that and uh, you'll learn a little bit more in videos to come. So, make sure to keep an eye out for those. All right, so we can move on to the next part here. This is Knickknacks. So this is the app that it's going to basically show you where all of your stuff is. So if you purchase different things like weapons, armor, ships, components, etc., in different places around Stanton and presumably in different systems down the road, this application will show you where exactly all of your things are. If we click open, we can see that in Hurston, we have some stuff at Lorville. We can click open. And now these are all the items that we have in Lorville, the stuff that we just recently purchased and the things that we were able to see in the inventory system just a moment ago. Now, of course, you can sort things out. You can go ahead and choose a different location. At the moment, we only have things in Stanton, uh, so that is fine. And then, of course, there are categories here as well. So if you're looking, let's say, just for a particular thing. So if we're looking for armor, we can go ahead and do that. And all types of armor, then you can choose subtypes as well, depending on the types of armor that you're looking for. And if you click in here, you'll see that we have the Odyssey 2 helmet and the Cubby backpack. Those are the two pieces of armor that we have. And we're able to find it very quickly just by choosing the category and the subcategory if applicable. So this is pretty cool. It does not, unfortunately, allow you to move things around, but it does show you where everything is and it helps you to stay organized. Moving on, we have the map. This is accessible by pressing F2. So you'll be using this quite a lot. Very basic functions of the map is you can move it around like this with your right mouse button. You can angle it up and down like this and turn it around like this with your left mouse button. If you double click on anything, it'll zoom in on it. And you can also further zoom in and zoom out using your mouse wheel. You can set destinations by simply double clicking on a planet, moving it around until you find a destination that you would like clicking on its marker and then clicking on set route. We're not going to see anything at the moment because we're currently not in a ship and we're not outside, but that is how you would do that. Okay, the next thing is the MoTrader app, and this is what allows you to send credits to other players and for them to send credits to you. Simply click on begin, choose someone to send credits to, type in the amount of credits that you want to send, and there's going to be a small fee for sending credits, so just keep that in mind. You do have the option of sending Alpha, UEC, or Merits, but note that unfortunately Merits now cannot be sent to anyone outside the prison system. Uh, if you want to learn about Merits, again, please watch the Crime and Punishment video. It'll explain it really well. And then simply go ahead and click Send. After a few seconds, you'll see that 100 UEC, or however much you wanted to send, was sent to the player that you wanted to send it to. You can then go ahead and click Yes or No, depending on whether you want to do another transaction. 
Okay, moving on to this next uh, area here. This uh, definitely is a little bit more hardcore or a little bit more overwhelming looking than some of the other tabs here or some of the other uh, areas within the Moby Glass, but it's pretty simple. This is the Contracts Manager, and it allows you to, well, find contracts and complete them to gain rewards, reputation, and money. The best way to, to look at this is you have your main tabs on the bottom, you have your side tabs here on the on the left hand side, and then you have your information pane on the right hand side. You have individual items here right beside the side pane as well, so you can go ahead and scroll through and click on any of the categories of missions that you'd like to do, and you'll have individual missions that appear. Note that sometimes you will have more missions appearing once you actually do your uh, permits or your certifications. So you'll want to make sure that you do these and I'll try to see if I can put out a separate bounty hunting video. I did have one that's a little bit older that I believe I did with my Titan, um, but uh, I'll do my best to put out another video just talking about all of the different parts of this in more detail. Essentially though, the easiest way to deal with this is simply find a mission that you like, go ahead and accept it. In this case, we have to pay a fee, but in uh, some cases we don't. So if we go, for example, here, we can choose a delivery mission and we can simply accept that offer and then as you can see we have a new marker that's shown up on the hud we have the subcategory delivery uh, that is going to show up under the accepted tab we have the uh, mission right here this little icon indicates that the mission is being tracked more details on the right hand side as before and you have your objectives now listed here you can go ahead and abandon this if you want or you can untrack and retrack it which you might have to do sometimes I'm going to go ahead and just abandon it for now. There is also a personal tab up here, and I should let you know that the missions that you get between general and personal uh, are a little bit different. Generally speaking, some of the personal missions are contextual missions that are based on you reaching a certain reputation with somebody that you are working with, like an NPC. Uh, but in most cases, it's also relatively illegal missions that will show up in your personal tab. So if you want to stay out of jail or prison, it's very, very likely that uh, the missions that are going to get you there are going to be under the personal tab. So you'll want to just go ahead and stick with the general tab as you get acquainted. Again, as you've seen before there, we have our accepted tab. This is where any missions that you accepted will go. We have a history tab, which will show you missions that you have either failed, abandoned, or completed in the past. So you can see that we have that there. And then we have a beacons tab, which allows you to create a new beacon. We'll get into more detail on that a little bit later on. It's not something that you really need to know as a brand new player. But again, I'll get into it in a little bit more detail, maybe when we have a more detailed specific Moby Glass guide in the future. All right, the next tab over here is the vehicle maintenance services. This is very important if you're inside your ship. And just so you know, you do have to be sitting in the pilot seat of your ship and landed uh, on a pad or inside of a hangar to be able to use these. What these allow you to do is, as you can see here, you can refuel your quantum and your hydrogen fuel, and you can also restock your weapons and ammunition, as well as repair your ship if required. All you need to do is simply go ahead and click on any of these that are white that are required for you. You'll know that because it'll give you a price. So basically it'll give you a quote on how much it's going to cost. Simply click on them and then it'll highlight them once you've done that, you can go ahead and just press this button here and the station will provide the services requested. Moving on, you have your journal. This is going to be one of the more straightforward areas of the Moby Glass. This is where you can get updates about different missions and changes in reputation and so on. And uh, you can go ahead and read through this at your own leisure. But this is generally speaking, not the most useful thing to see uh, in the Moby Glass. It's definitely helpful in some cases, but you won't be really using it too much as a new player. Finally, we have the Delphi app here at the end, and this is going to be the representation of uh, your relationship with other people that you work with. Oh, over here on the left hand side, you'll notice that there will be different factions that you can work with. And under each faction, if you click on them, you'll notice that they have different levels that you can attain. The more reputation and hence the more work you do with them, the better your reputation can get. And the higher your reputation gets, the better your ranks are going to be. And in certain situations, you're going to have certain perks that come along with this, like better payments or access to more difficult missions. You also have a dossier here, which will give you a little bit more information. For the Red Wind line hall here, unfortunately, we don't have too much info, um, but you will have other things appearing here as you start doing missions for them. 
Uh, so just keep that in mind. And of course, we do have a little bar here that's representative of how much they like or dislike you. So if you tend to do fairly well, you'll start to get that going up in the right direction into the green. And if you're constantly abandoning or failing missions, you might make them upset and it'll go into the red. At that point, they might be less likely to offer you good missions or well-paying missions or just might stop offering you missions altogether. Then you have your contacts over here as well. It's very similar to the uh, organizations. The difference is that under organizations, you're dealing with NPC organizations and in the future, uh, human run organizations. And with the contacts, you'll have members of organizations or contacts from different NPC factions that you are dealing with directly. Those people can also send you on missions and get you to do things for them. And like the reputation system in this tab, they will have their own opinions of you based on your performance and be able to offer you better or worse things depending on how well or bad you perform. So that's pretty much going to do it for the Moby Glass. I know that was just a very quick rundown, but it should help you to understand the basics. And again, if you'd like to see something more specific on the Moby Glass, do let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to make a video for it. For now, we're going to go ahead and head over to the spaceport where we're going to do the last thing in this video, which is go ahead and take off from the spaceport and get out of atmosphere after getting uh, some basic familiarity with the spaceship controls using a mouse and keyboard. So simply run towards Metro Center. This is going to be the subway center that's going to take us to different areas within Lorville. And we're going to go down here and take the spaceport line. All right, so we have a perimeter line and a spaceport line. So we're going to go to the spaceport line. That will take us to the spaceport as the name ensues or suggests. And uh, there we go. So there is a sprawling uh, subway system here in Lorville. But to be honest with you, the only lines that you'll really be taking most, it's going to be from Metro Center. You're going to be taking the spaceport line, which is where we're going now. And then also you're going to be able to take it uh, to take the uh, commerce line. So whenever you land, for example, your trading ship, you can take the commerce line to Central Station, where the Central Business District is, where you can then sell any of your commodities. So we'll just wait here for the train and we'll meet you right over on the other side, on the other side of this line. Okay, so we've arrived at Teza Spaceport and uh, what you'll wanna do is just follow the way that I'm going here. It's pretty straightforward. Now, the line that I was talking about, the, uh, the commerce line here, if you were to do some trading, which I might do an updated trading video in the future here, you will want to access the commerce line in order to get to central station to sell all your stuff. That commerce line is literally just right there. So that is where we came from. That's Metro Center. And then this is going to take us to the, uh, the commerce district or the central business district where we can sell our stuff. The only other way to go is going to be this way, which will take us to Tiza Spaceport where we can grab our ship and get out of here for the first time. So that's pretty exciting. To go ahead and make your way through here now these might look familiar these are again the payment terminals for any of you who have committed some very light crimes or perhaps you've gotten some fines or gotten your ships uh, impounded you can simply pay that over here simply walk up and use your inner thought system as always to log in and then you'll have some fines over here presumably to pay you can simply just go ahead and click on them and pay them or you can just click on the pay all fines button here I don't have anything, of course, because I've been a good boy. So I'm just going to go ahead and log out here. And we're going to make our way back towards the spaceport. Give you guys a little quick tour here. And then we'll go ahead and grab the ship. Uh, we'll have a little M50 interceptor here. Just kind of chilling here, which is kind of cool. So when we first come into the spaceport, we'll notice that we have what's called the ASOP terminals over here. This is where you can call up all of your ships. And of course, if we move a little bit further down here, we'll notice that we have New Deal. We won't go in there right now, but that is one of the two ship dealerships available in the game. The other being Astro Armada over at Area 18. And then if we follow this hallway down here, we'll notice that in this area, as well as in this area, we have a number of elevators, any of which we can take to any of the hangars where our ships might be uh, uh, placed from storage. And then of course we have Vantage Rentals, which you can go into Again, using the F, the interaction menu, and this is where you can rent a number of different ships for a number of different days, depending on what you need it for. In my opinion, I honestly wouldn't really recommend renting ships unless, uh, you know, you really don't have any other option. But uh, we have a really great community, like I said, here, and many of us have pretty much almost every ship between, uh, between all of us here uh, in the game. So if you'd like to fly something, just come by the Discord and we'll spot it for you. 
Okay, so in order to get your vehicle or, or your ship, all you need to do is again, hold F, left mouse button click. Now, this is my uh, SSP Gaming account. So we only have just the uh, Pisces here. This is uh, I have the Pisces game package and you might have something very similar. The Pisces is a great little ship. It's got a few uh, SCU worth of cargo that you can put in there as well as a couple of people that can travel with you in seats. So it's always really, really nice. We'll go ahead and click on the retrieve button and that is going to just ask you to wait a few seconds and then it'll proceed to tell you which hangar your ship is in and you can also see that we now have a pip on the radar or rather on our hud which will show you uh where it is now if you wanted to store your ship again you can simply walk away from the terminal and come back and then click the store button what you might notice is if your ship has blown up then this button will change into a claim button and when you claim your ship you will be able to basically it's like claiming insurance uh, to get a brand new ship so what it'll do is it'll get rid of that ship wherever it might be even if it's not blown up if it's in another part of the system for example if it has anything in it that's even worse because it'll get completely cleared out and you'll be getting a brand new ship after a short amount of time if you don't want to wait that amount of time there will be a expedite button down in the bottom right hand corner after you've claimed your ship where you can pay a nominal amount of uec to basically make the insurance people hurry up so we're going to go ahead and head over to hangar number nine. I'll show you how to get into your ship and how to get going. We're going to head over to the elevators here. And just as always, we're going to hold F and press left mouse button on the button there. Call the elevator. Now, these elevators are very different to any other elevator in any other game you have ever played because they literally just go wherever they want. Uh, now, we're zooming in quite a bit here. So we're going to go ahead and middle mouse click and we're going to scroll down. We're going to see hangar number nine is right there. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And we'll notice the pip starts to move as the elevator starts to move. It is definitely not a normal elevator, which is uh, interesting, but you'll get used to it. Okay, so here we go. We're finally here. Now, one thing that you can do, I mean, we got here pretty quickly, but one thing that you can do is you can call ATC well before you even get to your ship. The way that you would do that is you would press F11. And if you remember in the friends tab, we had access to the Lorville landing services. Now this will be of course, a little bit of a different name based on where you are, but all you need to do is simply click on the little button right here. Press F11 to get out of that menu. And then you can see that our doors are opening. It's uh, usually advisable to do that if you wanna save some time in the elevator or just basically any time between when you get to your ship and when you called it, because by the time you get here and start everything up, everything will be good to go. If you're trading or running any kind of trade uh, missions or delivery missions, then this will save you a lot of time. And we got into the ship exactly the same way as we do everything else. That's gonna be of course with the interaction menu there, holding F with the left click, very simple. And you can press T if you'd like to toggle your flashlight if it's a little dark. That might make things a little easier for you to see. Simply walk up to the seat here. We'll hold F and we'll enter the pilot seat. Again, just keep in mind that if you're too far away, you'll get that little green glow and you'll need to move a little bit closer. Left mouse button click and you're in. Now, there's a few different ways that you can start up the ship. You can do the auto start or you can do a manual start. The auto start is really simple. I'm just going to press Z actually for now just so I can have a free look here. Uh, you can press Z anytime and now you can see I'm moving around the mouse and the mouse is going to control pitch, roll, or rather that is yaw, and then the Q and uh, E buttons are going to control your uh, roll. I'm going to press Z really quickly just so I can move around and uh, very, very easily look around. This also works if you press F4 and you've got free look enabled, you should be able to look all the way around your ship wherever you like in 360 degrees. So it's pretty nice. If there's any part of your ship that you want to check out really, really closely, uh, you can definitely do that. And uh, it also makes for some really nice screenshots. Okay, so the ways to start up the ship, we've got R, which is going to be flight ready. So R as in Romeo. Okay, so uh, what we can see, we've got a few monitors that came to life. And I'll just kind of tell you very quickly over what we can see here, although you can uh, definitely, um, you can go through these and change them by clicking the menu button on the top left hand corner. And again, you can do this uh, with the F button. So if you're holding F, you go into your inner thought menu and you can interact with all of these screens, which is really nice. 
This is the other way to call the uh, the ATC, by the way. You can just call them using this. But honestly, it's just much easier to do it through the F11 menu because it's just much faster. Right, so uh, that one there, it looks like it is the comms menu. What you can do is if you want to zoom in and out, if you're blind like me and you want to see something a little bit better, uh, you can definitely zoom in by holding F and using your mouse wheel. But as soon as you let F go, you're going to go back to the normal view. Over here, we have a power panel. Over here, we have our self status panel. Over here, we can see that we have a target, which we don't have a target at the moment, so nothing shows up. On this side, we have representations of our shields, front, back, left, and right. But if you have a really small ship, chances are you don't actually have shield facing, so these will all go down at the same time, no matter where you're hit from. And then we have another little target screen over here. Again, you can change this to whatever you like later on using the menu button. We also have a little uh, 2D radar here in the middle. So if we want to start to go, uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to set our limiter. You don't have to do this. You'll notice that our limiter is being moved with our mouse button here. So you can set it to as high as you want. This means that it's going to basically go as, as fast as the ship and the atmosphere will allow. And then you can slow it down if you want to make sure that you have a nice controlled takeoff. Go ahead and go into the external view here again with uh, my Z button pressed in uh, to toggle the free look. We'll go ahead and press spacebar to lift off the hangar and the N key as in November to bring our landing gear in. If we were in a ship that had vertical takeoff and landing thrusters, VTOL, then we would be able to press K to trigger those. And we're going to go over some very quick keybinds here, some basic keybinds just to get you moving. So W is going to be forward. I'm not sure if you can see. We're going to actually increase here. I'll, I'll go to this view so you can see a bit better. So we're going to increase our maximum speed so that we can go as fast as we're able to. If we press forward, you can see that we're going forward there. And then if we press uh, S, or sorry, W for forward, S to go back. Then we can strafe left with A, a strafe right with D. Uh, Q is going to make us roll to the left. E is going to make us roll to the right. Okay, I can press Z again or Z, which will unlock my free look. And now I can actually maneuver my ship with my mouse, which is actually quite nice. We can press spacebar again to start lifting up with our vertical uh, thrusters that are on the bottom of the ship. And if we want it to go down, we can press control to bring ourselves back down again vertically. There we go. And then simply all we need to do to get going is just go ahead and point ourselves up. I like to straighten out my uh, mouse yoke by putting this little icon right in the middle. And then I press Z so I can look around while I'm holding W. And if we press shift, we can uh, add a little boost to the engines. And that'll get us out of atmosphere relatively quickly. What's really nice about Star Citizen is there's really no loading screens per se. So other than the one that you get at the very beginning, you're basically able to leave and enter atmospheres and move around the system without really any kind of roadblocks at all. If you're running a system that's not as powerful, you might get some pop in and texture loading, things like that. But there are no really loading screens to speak of. What I would recommend is uh, if you are planning on purchasing this game and you have a hard drive, very, very, very highly recommend that you upgrade to a solid state drive since it's pretty much a necessity. You get a really cheap SATA one for probably about 50 bucks. All right. So now that we're moving up into space, we're going to go ahead and have a look at some of the UI elements really quickly here before we finish out the video. And that way you'll get an idea of what everything means because there's a lot of stuff going on here. And uh, some of it might look familiar to some of you who have uh, flown flight or space simulators in the past. And sometimes uh, it's not as obvious. So we'll just go ahead and go over everything. We'll stop simply uh, by releasing the W key and we'll just kind of float up here. Now we're still moving a little bit. We're going to start slowing down but uh, that's okay. What you can do as well is you can hold shift if you're not holding W, A, S, or D. And as you can see, we're getting some, uh, we're getting some blood pulled, uh, pulled into our head as uh, we are working against the gravity of the planet here by trying to slow ourselves down, but that's okay. Right, so you can hold shift and uh, shift or X is going to be your space break. So 
X is going to be your space break no matter what other buttons you're holding down. But if you are not holding down W, A, S, or D, like any of the directional buttons, um, then you can just hold shift, which is your boost button, and the shift will um, it, it'll act as a space break for you. Um, otherwise, you can just hold X, which is the dedicated space break button. Now, you do have a few other options here. Um, we can shoot. And of course, we have a couple of different uh, fire groups, as you can see. So if you're coming from Star, uh, from uh, Elite Dangerous, this isn't going to be too different from uh, from what you see there. Um, in order to be able to access this, we're going to go ahead and zoom into one of these panels. And you saw that I was shooting two different sets of guns there. You can see that because we have fire groups laid out in the UI here. So if we look up here, we can see that we have Bulldogs and we have Omni Skies. So our Bulldogs are these ones. And these are our Omni Skies. So we have both laser repeaters and laser cannons on this. And these are both size ones. Okay. And what you'll see here is as we shoot... We'll start to uh, deplete the ammo, but the ammo in laser or energy weapons, I should say, is temporary. So it does go away, but it will recharge after some time. Now, if you want to decide which button fires which fire group or which weapon, then you simply go over to your weapons tab here. Go over to guns. And we can see that we have our bulldogs are zero. And our omni skies are one. So what zero means is it's going to be your primary mouse button and one is your secondary mouse button. And you'll only have the choice between one and the other. So if I wanted everything to fire on mouse button one or the left mouse button, I would change everything to zero. And now if I use my left mouse button and fire all of them at the same time. Now you're probably wondering what's the purpose of this. Well, if you have different types of weapons that you don't want to fire at, uh, at your target as other uh, fire groups, then you might want to separate them so that you are using weapons that are specific for the job. So for example, if you have some weapons that are really good at taking down the shields of an enemy, so let's say if we have some distortion repeaters in place of our bulldogs, we might not necessarily want to fire those at the target at the same time that we fire something that is uh, probably going to do a little bit more damage um, against uh, the hull uh, or so on. So uh, that is why you'd want to do that. In my case, I think I'm just going to go back to the way that it was. Of course, uh, you'll have different options here. Some ships also have an EMP, which you can charge and fire. And in that case, you basically only have two buttons on your mouse that you can assign this to. So you would probably assign your EMP to one of your mouse buttons and all of the rest of your guns on the other mouse button. So that's, that's the big reason why you would do that. Other than that, let's just go ahead and uh, go over the symbology of uh, of this very quickly. There's going to be a few things here now. Uh, over on the very left-hand side here, you'll see that we have a few little things here. Uh, VTOL is going to tell us whether we have VTOL mode engaged or disengaged. In this case, this ship doesn't have VTOL thrusters as some of the other ships do in the game. So this is not ever going to illuminate. CPLD is your coupled mode. Coupled mode is basically kind of like the clutch in your car's transmission. It's when it's engaged, you're putting power, uh, you know, to, to make the engine go forward. And when it's not engaged, it's kind of just free spinning. Uh, what you can do is you can uh, decouple the ship, which we'll talk about in, uh, in another video, maybe in like an advanced bounty hunting video. And what that'll allow you to do is it'll allow you to very quickly rotate your ship 180 degrees and shoot at targets while your momentum from the momentum that you've built up in coupled mode carries you backwards which technically is the same direction that you were heading a moment ago before you flipped 180 degrees i hope that didn't confuse anybody esp is uh, something that helps you with uh with targeting it's not something that we're going to talk about at the moment uh we'll talk about that in another video and then gear of course is your uh your extension of your landing gear so if you press n you'll see that the uh, icon will flash to indicate that your gear is in transit and then you'll get a voice to tell you that it's deployed and if we press it again then it'll tell you there you go okay so now we're going to look at the rest of the uh the ui here very quickly we'll start at the top here this is going to be your infrared your electromagnetic uh and your cross section signatures these honestly don't work as intended at the moment uh they do give you an idea of what they are based on the uh types of components that you have 
uh, in your ship. But again, IR is kind of broken right now. Stealth is kind of broken right now. There's a lot of things um, that kind of need to be fixed. But basically, all you need to know is that the different components that you have in your ship uh, have a different signature that they provide. So some components that are larger will provide larger signatures. Smaller components will provide smaller signatures. And better grade components might be able to shave off some of the signature that they give away, whereas lower grade components might not. So these are just different ways that missiles can track you as well. So you have missiles that track with infrared, missiles that track with electromagnetic, which they happen to be the best ones at the moment, generally speaking, and then missiles that track using the cross section of your ship itself. And we have the heading tape. This is not unlike uh, something that you might see in Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, which is kind of weird to have in space, but it does give you some situational awareness in terms of letting you know which way you're heading and aligning. Uh, we do also have an elevation tape over here, which will show you the angle at which you're approaching a planet. Uh, generally speaking, when you're in space, you don't really um, see some of this information because it's not pertinent. Like you won't be able to see, for example, uh, your ele your elevation tape over here. Sorry, this is your, your angle of attack tape. This is your elevation tape here. So this is telling you you're 82,220 meters over the surface of this planet here. Of course, when you go away from a planet, you're not going to see that and uh, it it'll just kind of be empty there. Over here, uh, we've got some additional information. We've got your thruster. Uh, so this is uh, showing you what your thruster is doing. So if we move forward right now, you'll see that the thruster is putting out power. And if we start to slow down, we're using a little bit of our boost as space brake to come to a stop. And that's what this is over here. So this is going to tell you the boost. Basically what's going on is uh, your boost will regenerate over time. If you use the boost up until the point just before it turns red, then you can continue to use it if you need to. As soon as it hits the red though, you'll need to wait for it to completely come up above the red before you can use it again. Over here, we also have our velocity tape here. So this will tell you how fast you're going. And then you might notice that we also have a, a little bit of symbology over here. So we have a red line and a white line. We have a little chevron, and then we also have a little square. The little square is going to indicate basically how fast or slow we're going to limit the ship to go. So if uh, we move our mouse wheel, we can move that square. That is going to indicate where the speed limiter is. So if we press W now, you'll notice that the ship will not go any faster than where that square is on that velocity uh, tape. If we move it up, then we can hold W and the ship will now go up to the maximum speed that is set uh, by that little square there. And bring that all the way up. One of the other things that you can uh, do is you can put on auto throttle. So you can press C and the auto throttle is uh, shown by this little line with a little triangle underneath. And basically what that's telling you is that the ship is going to apply the maximum amount of throttle that the speed limiter will allow it to apply. And of course, you can still completely adjust that with your mouse button, even if you have your auto throttle set. Keep in mind that if your auto throttle is, uh, if your uh, speed limiter is set very high and your auto throttle is on and you're going at max speed, by itself, it will take some time to come back down to the speed set by the speed limiter, but it will, uh, despite taking some time, eventually get there. One of the other things that I want to talk about quickly here before we go is, of course, the difference between the white and the red. So the white is what's called SCM. It's basically your uh, maneuvering speed that will allow you to maneuver as best as your ship can possibly maneuver. Anything above that is going to uh, dramatically reduce your maneuverability and how fast you can turn, roll, pitch, and yaw. And it looks like we've got some Hurston security here scanning us, so that's fun. So, for example, if you are uh, flying very quickly, you're going to find that your turning radius, your pitch radius, your roll, and all those other things will be affected if you're going too quickly. If you are going under the SCM speed, however, you'll be able to pitch and roll and yaw and maneuver much better than anyone that might be in the red. Now, of course, uh, these values are different for different types of ships, so that's something to keep in mind, uh, but that is something that you can use to your advantage if you're dogfighting, for example, which we'll take a look at in a future video. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for the second episode here of my comprehensive beginner's guide for new and returning players. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it's a lot of information, but I wanted to give you guys as much as I possibly could while also trying to keep it as 
sort of toned down to just the basics and things that uh, a newbie or a new player would find useful without trying to make it seem too complicated or overwhelming. That being said though, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Myself or another community member will do their best to get in touch with you and help to answer any questions you might have. And of course, uh, the best place to ask those questions is our Discord because you'll find a lot of people there ready and willing to help you out and a bunch of people willing to play as well. So make sure to leave me a comment and let me know what you thought of this video and of the series so far. If you find these videos helpful, it really helps me out if you drop a like, subscribe and ring the bell. And just keep in mind, I do stream on, on uh, Twitch Wednesdays and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern. And of course, I hang out on Discord all the time. So come on by and join us. Links are going to be down below. Again, everybody, thank you so, so much for watching and for all of your wonderful support. I hope to see you in the next video.